Between 1795 and 1918, the Polish state did not exist. However, Poles never reconciled themselves with that. Every instance of fighting for independence included women. A box office hit could be made about each one of them. Emilia Plata, the Polish Joan of Arc. In 1830, a 24-year-old noblewoman, during the subsequent November uprising, when Poles ruled by the Russian Tsar uprose against him, Emilia Plata, dressed as a man, formed a several hundred strong legion and waged several victorious clashes with Russia's regular army. In 1863, during the next Polish uprising against the Tsar, the participation of women was massive. Polish women often dressed in mourning clothes at the time to manifest their patriotic sympathies. The women were such a threat to the Russian occupiers that the Russians court martialed criminals of both sexes, as they put it. Back in the times when women the world over were struggling for equal rights, the Polish woman from Warsaw, Maria Skodowska Curie, showed them all that women can even surpass men in science. After all, she won two Nobel Prizes, one in physics and one in chemistry. Józef Piłsudski, the co-founder of Polish independence, adored women, and they him. Kuzutsky did not want women to be on the front line. But in vain. The women themselves pushed to get into the legions fighting the Russians during the First World War. The Voluntary Legion of Women was created in 1918 and gathered 2,500 women soldiers. Two years later, when the Polish army was defending Vilnius from Russian Bolsheviks, a Times correspondent enthusiastically telegraphed to London, women with rifles are defending the city. It was a worldwide sensation. Less than two decades later, Polish women had to fight against the German occupation during the Second World War. They treated the wounded, conspired, smuggled weapons, but what was incredible in comparison with other countries, they constructed bombs and ran chemical laboratories at home. Members of the Diversion and Sabotage Legion, DISC, under the command of van der Goertz, blew up railways, bridges, cut telephone lines, liquidated collaborators, and also important German officers of the SS and Gestapo. 7,000 women volunteers served in the Women's Auxiliary Service during World War II. These Polish women went with the army of General Anders from Soviet Russia, across the Middle East and to Europe. Having traversed hundreds of kilometers on foot, they took part in the Battle of Monte Cassino which was won in large part thanks to the Polish Second Corps under General Anders and which opened the way for the Allies to roam. In the spy profession, Polish women were also among the best. One of them, the British intelligence agent, Krystyna Skarbek, has become a legend. It was none other than Krystyna Skarbek who was the archetype of Vespa Lind, James Bond's girlfriend. The end of World War II meant that Poland was under Soviet occupation. The wartime partisans needed to hide and fight in the woods again. The women joined them. One of them was Danuta Sledzikówna, or Inka as she was known. She did not want to betray her legion colleagues, so the communists sentenced her to death. Tell my grandma I acted as I had to, she wrote to her girlfriends. During 
the Solidarity Revolution movement in the 1980s, cameras of Western TV stations showed men with moustaches, but women also played an important role. After all, the strike at the shipyard in Gdansk, which was the spark in creating Solidarity, began because the crane operator, Anna Valentinovich, had been fired. She had been under surveillance by a hundred secret police officers. Once she was locked up in prison, even her murder was being planned, but she remained fearless throughout. The role of women in the armed struggles for Polish independence accelerated the process of women's emancipation, 